in the last video we learned some basic properties and the definitions of relations between sets all the examples we did were between set A and itself and today we're going to go a bit further and talk about functions so a definition we have two sets A and B and a relation from A to B and we say that R the relation is a function when every element of A is re related with only one, and this is very important, only one element of B. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the relation R is from A to B. This means that R uh, is a subset, is a, is a set formed by pairs A, B, where A is element, is an element of A, and B is an element of B. In the examples we did the last video, we had both sets A. This is a more general definition, but it's the same uh, principle that the other one. So let's put this definition in symbols. This would be uh, for every x, an element of A, there exists a unique, so this is unique, uh, element y of b that verifies x is related to y. And when we are talking about functions, we are usually going to use the letter letters f, g, h, and more. Those are the ones used the most by, by most books. So if I have a function f, um, I say f is a function that goes, uh, those, that goes from the set A to the set B. And what f does, f takes an element x and gives you as a result an element y, where x is an element of A and y is is an element of B. So let's let's start with, with an example to make things easier. Uh, what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna first define my sets. So I have the set A and it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and five. And my set B is the set 1, 4, 7, and 23. And I'm going to define a function f that it's going to be from the set A to the set B. And what I'm going to do is say f in 1, so I'm going to define uh, what number th the f gives me in each element of a so f of 1 is 1 f of 2 the second element of a is 1 f of 3 is 23 f of 4 is 4 and f is four. I'm going to define it that way and it's important to notice that these elements so 1, 1, 23, 4 and 4 are all, all, all elements of B and the elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are all elements of A because that's what f does. f takes an element in this set, set A, and as a result, it gives you an element in the set B. So there's a very common way of, well, it's the same we did in the last video, only now we have two sets. We have the set A and the set B. And we can list the elements, so I have 
One, two, three, four, five. And in here I have one, four, seven, twenty-three. And what I'm gonna do is draw an arrow between A and B uh, that will join the elements. For example, f of one equals one, so one goes to the element one. We did the same uh, in the last video with both both sets A and f was a relation r so it's the same thing now f of 2 equals 1 so 2 goes there f of 3 equals 23 f of 4 equals 4 and f of 5 equals 5 now let's think about the definition of a function so, for a function, I know that I need, for every element x in A, I need a unique y in B, so that it verifies that the x is related to y. So, this would be the same as saying f of x equals y. So, I have to check. If each element of x has a definition like this, and that for every element I only have one definition. I can't have f of x equals y1 and f of x equals y2. I can't unless, unless y1 equals y2. So in order to know if this this thing I just defined here is a function, I need to check every element here and see it if it has a unique element here. So I'm going to start with uh, number 1. So when I check number 1, well, I have only one arrow and it's go it goes to number 1. This is because f of 1 equals 1. Now when I go to check number 2, I may think, oh, it goes to number 1. So, 1 here has two elements. Yes, and that is correct, but that doesn't affect our definition. Because our definition said for L every x in A. So, I'm not checking the elements in B, I'm checking the elements in A. So, what the definition of function says, that for each element I have here, I need only one arrow. So, to check if something is or isn't a function, I'm not gonna look at this part, okay? I'm just gonna focus on this part of the drawing. Now, every element here has an arrow, because I have a pink line in every element, and it's important to know that it's only one. I don't, I don't have something like this. I don't have that going to another element. I don't. That's because this f is a function. Okay. Now, let's do another example. And I'm going to focus only on this in this video because functions are very important, so it, they will be very useful, so we, we really need to understand them. I'm going to draw another set. Uh, it's the same set, it's just another relation. I have A and B. So the same elements as before. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And I have 1, 4. 7 and 23 and I'm gonna draw this function okay 
Now, what I recommend is for you to pause the video and check if this is a function, and if it's not, then why not? I will now solve this. So, we have... Let's rewrite the definition. So, we know we want f is a function if for every x in a there is a unique y in b that purifies the f of x equals y. So when I look at this function, I see two problems. The first problem is I start checking elements of a. So I start with the first one. The first one is this one. And it's 1. So I say f of 1 equals and 1 doesn't have any arrows. Okay? So f of 1 equals nothing. Uh, okay? It's not defined. And that, so this tells me f is not a function. Okay, let's say we eliminate this element of a and we look at this. Well, again, I have another problem because the, the element 3 has two arrows. So if I say, if I want to talk about f of 3, I say, oh, okay, I'm going to follow this arrow, f of 3 equals 1. But then someone else comes and says, no, I follow this arrow and I think f of f, f of 3, sorry, is 23. Okay, so, um, is, is 1 equal 23? No. <laughs> no, 1 is not equal to 23. So, we have another problem. We need a unique y in b, so, so that this relation verifies. So that's another problem with this function. Let's now say it's a it's a pretty simple definition, but I want it to make to be clear, so I'm gonna write it. So another definition. Uh, we're going to say I have two functions, f and g, and they both go from a to b, where a and b are any set. And I'm going to say that f equals g if f of x equals g of x for every x in a. So what this says is actually pretty simple. I have a, b and a and b. And basically, it says, well, if I have a few elements here, well, I need the same arrows. Okay, so if this one comes to the first element, this one goes there. Let's say one, two, three. One, two, three. Same here, because they're the same sets. And here I have one goes there, two goes to number one, and three goes to number two. So for this example I have f of one, uh, this is f, and this is g. I have f of one equals one, f of two equals three, and f of three equals two. And for g I have g of one, equals 3, g of 2 equals 1, and g of 3 equals 2. So, yes, g of 3 equals 2, f of 3 equals 2, so they're the same. Okay, again, that's a very common mistake. Why? Well, because f of 1 equals 1, and g of 1 equals 3. So, if I said, with this example, if I said f of x equals g of x, then in particular, 
it would be valid for 1, so I could say f of 1 equals g of 1, and this is f of 1 equals 1 equals g of 1, 3. Okay, that's a, that is absurd. So, then we can say f is different to g. It's a very simple definition, but I want it to be clear and in the video, so no one would have any problems with it. We will now talk about another definition that might be confusing and it's the image of a function. So the image of a function is again I have f a function co that goes from a to b and the image of f, now I'm talking about the function, is the subset of all elements in b that are related to an element of A. Okay, so the image, I'm gonna write it I n of f. So the image of f is the set of all elements in B. So Y that belongs to P and are related to an element of A. So what I'm saying are related, this means that exists an X in A that verifies F of X equals Y. So when I looked at the definition of a function, I had my set, my set A and my set B, and I was paying attention to the elements here. Now with the image this was definition of f. Now with the image, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this set because it's a subset of B. So it's going to be another circle in there, it's a subset. So this is the image. So back to our earlier example. I'm going to write my sets again. So I have A was 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and my set B was 1, 2, ah uh, no, sorry, 1, 1, 4, 7, and 23. Um, F of 1, equals 1, f of 2 equals 1, f of 3 equals 23, and uh, f of 4 equals 4, and f of 5, oh, f of 5 equals 4. So again, I started drawing B, A, and I draw my function F, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 23, 4 goes to 4, and 5 goes to 4. So let's try and imagine what the image is of F. So it is a subset of B. It's the subset, I'm going up, is the subset of B that has all the elements that are related to an X. So in our drawing, that would be all the numbers here that have an arrow, right? Because one, I have to think, okay, let's try with one. One belongs to B. And I ask myself, is there an element X here in A that verifies that F of X equals Y? Yes, I just have to follow this arrow and, okay, one, 
I have one. Equals one. And I also have f of two equals one. Okay, that doesn't matter. It's sufficient for us to have one of these. Oh well, so one is an element of p that has two elements in the number in the set A that are related to it. So one belongs to the image. I start looking at four and I say okay, four belongs to P. And four has the elements uh, four and five. So f of four equals four and f of five equals four. So four belongs here. I look at the number seven. Seven belongs to P. And when I come here and check my my definition, f of one equals one, f of two, one, f of three, twenty-three, f of four, four, and f of five, four. So none of these red elements are seven. So seven does not belong to the image of f. Because it's it's alone here, it doesn't have an arrow. And in the same way when I look at the element twenty-three, so twenty-three belongs to P and f of three equals twenty-three. So twenty-three is an element of the image. And if I want I could draw my image here as a subset. So I'm going to do this. So the blue set is my image. Okay, this is the image of F. And this is a very important concept and we will learn more about this, we will use it more in the next video.